We'll be talking about all that stuff. We'll be getting a preview of the track here at Charlotte by one of the drivers here tonight, Chad Snyder. Looking forward to that right there. David Lorfano in the Lucky Dog detailing. Been on a hot streak here lately with All-American Racing League. Looking to bring that streak here tonight into the All-Star race. Try to walk out of here with a little bit of pocket change. Trying to figure out some things on the back end here with SDK iRacing live timing. Having some issues updating it, so uh, that is unfortunate. Once we get this figured out, we'll be right back live to you guys again. Still got about 20 minutes before the race. We'll take care of this technical issue on our end, and we'll be right back with the action.
righty, we are back. Sorry about that delay there. iRacing live timing presented by SDK did need a soft update. We actually had to close out of iRacing.com to be able to do that. But it wouldn't be a broadcast without the fine overlays brought to us by those guys over at SDK. They do a heck of a job with iRacing and the live timing app. So we appreciate those guys. I do apologize, but as you can see at the top left on the NASCAR tower, we still got 17 minutes to go here in the practice session. So we're not missing any of the action right now. But we appreciate you guys hanging out through that delay. I'm Brandon Robinson, owner and broadcaster here at Faded TV. We appreciate you guys tuning in here over on twitch.com. This, of course, All-American Racing League. Their all-star race here at Charlotte. The 2021 Truckers Feed America Cup Series all-star race. Sponsored by Cutting Edge Forge out of North Carolina. Now this is going to be the only stage race here that we've done with All-American Racing League. Stage one, going to be 20 laps. We're going to pull a competition yellow. Let everybody go in either make their way down pit road some guys might stay out stage two is going to be 25 laps we'll for sure see everybody come down after that stage stage three it's going to go to 30 laps and then stage four going to be 15 laps so i would assume the majority of the car is going to come down in stage three as well after their 30 laps to come down get fuel to make it to the end of the race and also get some fresh tires here at Charlotte Motor Speedway. As we see the drivers out there working on drafting with one another, that's Larry Garns in the 20 behind him, Louis Clark making his return to the track here at All-American Racing League. Of course, the guy that takes care of all the designs there, we see the double zero of Jenny May Jr. Uh, down into the infield there. Now, as I said before we cut away to take care of all those updates, tonight's not a points race. It is an all-star race, but we're going to go through the points after uh, week four. Which was uh, Road America, by the way, September 7th. That's where we left off with these guys. David Lerfano running away with that race. Absolutely. A phenomenal road course race by that number eight car walking away with the win last week. As we take a look at the week four standings, David Hara still on top with 142. He's got one win here uh, this season. David Lerfano, the only driver with multiple wins so far behind his teammate in the point standings with 138. Patrick McQuaid, 136. Mark Snyder, 128 points. Joshua Hetrick, 124. Those are your five, your top five drivers coming in to tonight. Joshua Hetrick having multiple polls here this season with two. In that sixth spot, Tyrone Yo with 118. John Higgins Jr., 114 points. Jim Ott at 112. Larry Garns triple digits with 104 and Brian Ludlow at 100 points those are your top 11 drivers now on the outside looking in Charles Dickey with 96 points Casey Bacala 94 Chad Snyder having a little a uh, little bit of a rough go here with the next gen cars he was uh, he, he finished in the top 4 last season with the uh, current gen cars Still trying to find his his uh, his way with these next gens. He's got 90 points looking on the inside of that. Behind him, Cameron Harris, Adam Angerstein, Kyle Martin. A lot of money on the line as we talked about before. All these guys paid an entry fee to get into this race. And a lot of bragging rights as well. I mean, you win the all-star race, it's a pretty good feeling. 13 minutes left in the practice session. Now, 
Not sure what's going on with uh, <laughs> trading paints there for Chad Snyder, unless if he does just have an all-primered car for the All-Star race. He does have some orange rims on there. The car actually looking pretty good, if I may say so myself. And there is his paint. So it was just a little uh, little mishap from trading paints. So I was going to say it was a pretty odd paint job for uh, Chad Snyder. He usually shows out there with the paint schemes. We're actually going to pull Chad Snyder. Into the booth here with us. Hey, Chad, you got a copy? Yes, sir. Faded. How you doing this evening? Uh, I'm doing pretty good. I I, uh, I didn't mean to pull you down here in the uh, super late model booth, but here we are nonetheless. I'll follow you down here. So, uh, yeah, the reason I want to bring you in here, give you a chance to talk about uh, this all-star race with All-American Racing League. I know there's a lot of money on the line. Uh, and then talk about this track um, before you uh, enter out there. Just talk to us a little bit about Charlotte, what you've been able to tell with these next-gen cars. Give us all that good information and how you think this uh, track's going to um, to hold up with drafting and all that stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's good. it's kind of a wild card uh, because, you know, obviously we haven't raced these cars here at this track before, but um, some of the things about this place uh, just don't change based on what the race car is like. Um, this is one of the more temperamental tracks that NASCAR goes to and as, that we go to as well. Um, just you never really race the same track from lap to lap here. This place is super sensitive as far as temperature goes. Um, for what I can tell in practice, as far as drivability, though, uh, these cars are, are pretty, are, they stick pretty well. And uh, it's going to be a lot of full throttle racing, but there's going to be a lot of pack racing in this race. Uh, the draft's going to play a huge role here. So it's definitely going to be exciting, especially with money on the line. Uh, you know, we don't have to worry about bad finishes because we don't have points. So I'm looking forward to getting out of here and just, um, just uh, you know, going for it all. Yeah, before you take us for a lap around here, uh, opinions on, you know, some of these tracks, especially with these next-gen cars, is this going to be... You know, is this going to be a track where we can take it too wide throughout the race? Is there going to be multiple racing lines that are going to be legitimate here, or are we going to be stuck to a single file race? I think there's definitely going to be multiple lines here because, uh, like I said, these things are flat out here on new tires in practice. So, um, yeah, I mean, you can run high, you can run in the middle, you can run low. I don't expect to see a lot of uh, a lot of free wide, but you very well could. Uh, just because, you know, if the situation pops up to where you need it, that's, uh, you know, you're going to see a lot of guys going for it when the time comes. So uh, you never know, man. I, you can go, at least by yourself, you can go wide open pretty much anywhere around this racetrack. So I think you're going to see a lot of two and three wide. Yeah, sure. Why don't you take us out for an out lap, get some heat on your tires, talk to us a little bit, and then uh, we'll go full go on a, on a hot lap the second time around. All right, sure. I'll, I'll go and creep around for a lap here. My my teammate, Josh Hetrick, was, I think, trying to help me out get, to get going there for a second. I'm not sure he knew what was going on. But uh, let's see here. I'm just going to go right around here a little bit now. Let's see here. Since we have such short stages, I don't think we're going to have a lot of green flag pit stops here, which is going to help because this exit is actually pretty tricky, trying to accelerate real hard on the green. Let me get here and try to get into a gap so I'm not messing anybody's practice line up here. Uh, but he's coming before we get this, that speed lap. I'm gonna, I would stay up high right here just to get that little bit extra real estate coming to the line. And like I said, on new tires on the qualifying lap, this is pretty much flat out. Uh, so you really want to pay attention to your line here because it can get really tight in the center if you try to enter too shallow and try to hold it around that line as much as you can. Now, you don't really need to let it go all the way out to the wall, at least on a, on a qualifying lap. Or in the race, you're going to kind of want to go where you need to go. But just kind of try to hold that here. And the biggest thing you want to do if you're trying to get speed on a qualifying lap around here is to be as smooth as you possibly can. I don't know if you can see my wheel there or not, but you see I'm trying not to move it around too much. I try to go down and commit to an angle and stick there. 
Now I'm pushing up a little bit here, but I've tried to correct it. Try to keep it from going all the way out to it. We try to shorten the track around. Try not to move the wheel at all going down the straightaway because any little bit counts. You want to try to turn at the right time so you don't push up in the middle, which I kind of missed it there. A little bit too high on the racetrack, but let it go out in the front stretch. And then cross your line and see what we got there. That was a, a 29.80, which isn't a great lap. But still, being by myself and being out here on cold tires, it's not that bad. Now, come on this turn to answer what the question that you had before, Faded. Um, you asked about multiple lines. Now, you can go in here and just as easily hold it wide open and run right around the top here as well. So, understand that while this is a good idea right now, while I'm out here by myself on fairly new tires, that top lane is probably going to get dicey once we have some laps on our tires. We only have two separate tires for this whole race. And once you get racing around, guys, and it changes the air around, and you have worn out tires, that's really going really gonna to make it dicey out there. All righty, we'll finish up this lap here. We're on board with Chad Snyder right now. Some good information for everybody at home here coming from a driver himself. Talking about racing lines and all sorts of stuff like that. Now, Chad, you, uh, you, you finished in the top four last season with the current uh, cup cars. And... Uh, struggling it might be a little harsh i don't i don't want to beat you up on there but you've yet to really find your footing with these next gen cars is a track like charlotte going to be one of those tracks where like you said it's it's flat out there's going to be a lot of pack racing can can you find some mojo on a track like this yeah i mean i wouldn't call struggling harsh at all like that's definitely been what we've been doing this year like i had a good race. my last race i ran was uh in atlanta i wasn't able to make road america but uh Atlanta, we ran really well, uh, which I think bodes well for us tonight. Um, and uh, hopefully, you know, we can, you know, there's no points on the line tonight because we have some work to do in the points. But uh, if I can come out of here with a good win or a good run tonight even, um, that would go a long way to get some momentum going to get forward. Um, these cars are, I think, more different than a lot of us anticipated from the Gen 6 car. And, uh, um, you know, I'm... I'm kind of seeing, seeming to find ways to stumble with how these things are different. So I'm still learning. Uh, a lot of these guys are also still learning. Some of these guys have uh, have really emerged on top with these Gen 6 cars, mainly the Hillbilly Motorsports guys have ran really well. Um, we just got a little catching up to do, but I'm confident we'll get there. Yeah, certainly plenty of race left. We head to Darlington next week before another off week. October 5th is going to be Indianapolis, October 12th, Dover. And then, of course, that last race before the first round of the playoffs at Homestead, Miami. So plenty of time for you to uh, to find your pace, get some momentum going. Chad, we appreciate you doing this for us. A lot of good information for the guys at home. Good luck tonight and uh, go and try to get you some money. Yes, I appreciate it. I want to, uh, want to take a second to thank Cutting Edge Forge for putting this race on for us. Um, we really do appreciate their support. I um, also want to thank my sponsors, Rebellion Graphics. Um, and uh, also, you know, want, to, want everybody to take notice of the steel on my hood. Uh, the uh, black ribbon over the Navy and Marine seals. Uh, just want to make sure everybody knows we haven't forgotten what happened a few weeks back. And uh, the families of those 13 service members are still in our hearts and thoughts. All righty, Chad. We appreciate it, buddy. Good luck. Thank you. As we do take a look at that black ribbon there on the hood of his car, of course, coming off of the 9-11 weekend. So, um, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of things still remember and never forget is um, is the motto. And um, certainly uh, nobody has forgotten. There's been a lot of honorary races over the weekend. We've called a few ourselves here um, at Faded TV and the tradition still going strong here, um, even through the middle of this week. So, again, uh, thanks to Chad Snyder for taking us around Charlotte. He had a lot of uh, in, uh, insightful information there. Now, uh, Charlotte, of course, uh, not really being technically um, a difficult track, but Chad actually uh, bringing out a 29.2 there on top of the leaderboards in the practice session. We got three minutes left. We're going to take a quick break up here in the broadcast booth. We'll keep up with the action on the track for you guys. We'll hang out with Louis Clark in the Project Dynamic 73. We'll be right back before we drop the green flag.
As the practice session comes to a close, we'd like to once again thank tonight's sponsor. Cutting Edge Forge. They're a blacksmith and a bladesmith. You can find them on Facebook.com at Cutting Edge Forge Arts and Craft Store. They're out of Wingate, North Carolina. Again, that's Cutting Edge Forge sponsoring tonight's race here at All-American Racing League. The series being brought to you by Top Sail Trucking. And this is the Truckers Feed America Cup Series. That's going to do it for the practice session. Five minutes qualifying. The best of two laps. Check them out at www.cuttingforge.com. Cuttingedgeforge.com. So Chad Snyder looking really good in that practice session. We'll see if that carries over to the qualifying. He's looking to find his groove in these next-gen cars. Looking to pick up a little bit of pace with these guys right now. He's on the outside looking in as far as playoffs go. Still plenty of races left. Four races before the playoffs begin. We'll catch up with some of these guys on the track right now as qualifying has begun. It's a double zero car of Johnny May. John Higgins Jr. having a heck of a season in that 19 car. Joshua Hetrick in the Or Lawn Care 25 Chevrolet. He's had himself a pretty good season as well in the next gen. He's certainly in line for a playoff run. Just needs to stay consistent, stay out of trouble. Keep bringing in these top fives, top eights. Does have two poles on the season. The only multiple pole winner <clears throat> of the season so far. Louis Clark, a part-time driver here in the Cup Series at All-American Racing League. But he is an admin of the Discord and he does do a lot of the paint schemes that you see on the cars here tonight. So he plays a big role with this league. Every time he shows up to race, he's always a race favorite. Fred Hool coming in here tonight in that 59 car. He's driving the Ford Mustang. Also flying down the infield there. Got a little bit high coming out of turn four. Oh, you see the stability on these next-gen cars as he goes a little bit off-roading there. That's Fred Hool putting on a show for us in the qualifying session. Larry Garns, part of Hillbilly Motorsports, picked up about halfway through last season. Charlie Dickey in the faded Motorsports 37 Chevrolet. He's had a bit of an up and down season so far. He's looked really good at times. Got caught in a, a few bad incidences throughout the weeks as well. These next gen cars do offer a lot of pack racing. They draft really well with one another, but once uh, once the car in front of you starts getting in trouble, you find yourself in trouble as well. That's what happened with Charlie Dickey throughout the season so he's looking to rebound a little bit these guys of course coming off of uh, Road America last week where David Lerfano stole the show I'm sure most of these guys are happy to be back on the ovals Cameron Harris making his way in here tonight In his 27 Toyota, the only Toyota here on the track tonight, possibly even in All-American Racing League. His DoorDash 27, he had a really good run at Road America 
for the most part, early stages for sure, just kept hitting the grass. Certainly didn't uh, end the race that he wanted to. He had a lot of speed at Road America, so he's looking to bounce back tonight. Of course, a lot of money on the line, so these guys are definitely bringing their A game here. We are in the triple digits for prize money. Like David Hare, I went to switch to him. At, he was on track, but I think he just finished up his qualifying session. He's going to drop to ninth as Cameron moves up to seventh. Louis Clark, though, going to be taking the pole here alongside David Lurfano. They're going to be sharing row one, Patrick McQuaid, John Higgins Jr. on that second row, third and fourth. Chad Snyder, we talked about looking to bounce back a little bit, <clears throat> create some momentum for himself. He's going to be in third row on the inside, starting fifth. Adam Angerstein going to be on the outside of him in sixth. Cameron Harris, Tyrone Yo Jr., seventh and eighth. David Hera, Joshua Hetrick, row 5, ninth and 10th. On the outside of that 10th is Charlie Dickey in 11th. Alongside Larry Garns, going to be on the outside of row 6. Johnny May and Fred Hool going to be sharing row 7 in 13th and 14th. <clears throat> there is a shot of David Hare out of Charlotte, North Carolina. So 14 cars showing up here tonight in the All-Star race. Louis Clark making it all the way from South London, England. Driver for Project Dynamic. Does a lot of road racing for those guys. A lot of endurance racing. He certainly helped a lot of guys out last week at Road America. We shown that video before the race there. Now we are going to be doing stage racing here. want to pull that up one more time so i got it right stage one 20 laps stage two going to be 25 laps stage three is the big boy run as we're going to do 30 laps and then stage four 15 laps so that's how they're breaking down their all-star race it all begins right here with the two drivers up front louis clark david lorfano both race favorites coming in here tonight, and they're showing it here in qualifying, waiting for the green flag to drop. And we're going to go green here at Charlotte for the All-American Racing League All-Star Race. Down into turn one, advantage, Louis Clark. Behind him in the 77, Patrick McQuaid. Chad Snyder on the inside. He's looking to keep up with that pace. David Lerfano kind of getting hung out there on the outside really going to need john higgins to keep up there to try to get a run you see cameron harris now on the inside as well of david lerfano so he's dropping back really early cameron harris checking up teammates colliding there that's david Harris and david lerfano touching doors coming across the front stretch down into turn one lerfano gonna have to dive down here if he can to try to catch that inside draft, I, I feel like that's where you want to be right now. Teammate, though, David Hera actually checking up as the race leader. Louis Clark has also done the same. So now it's Chad Snyder in that five car kind of down low. Kind of waiting to see if Cameron Harris can catch up. Maybe he needs to try to slide his way up top to get on behind Patrick McQuaid.
So in the early going, it's been Louis Clark, your pole sitter, leading all four laps here in the early going of this all-star race. Patrick McQuaid's been right behind him. Chad Snyder looking like a strong third right now. Cameron Harris moving up himself. He's now into the top five. He's up two spots from his seventh qualifying spot. David Lerfano dropping back early into the race. He's now find himself back in that fifth, sixth spot. Actually battling for fourth right now. There he is, Cameron Harris on the inside. Teammate David Harris sticking with that 27 car on the inside for now. We'll see if he pushes up to back up that number eight car to push him along for that spot. Behind them in seventh, John Higgins Jr. He's got Adam Angerstein working with him on that high line. Certainly a lot of side drafted coming into play here. Joshua Hetrick up a spot in ninth. Charlie Dickey in that 10th spot. And Tyrone Yo Jr. and Larry Garns and Freddie Houle. In 12th, 13th, and 14th. Back up front, Louis Clark, still your race leader in that Project Dynamic 73 Ford Mustang. Nothing's changed in the top three, but I will say Cameron Harris with an early uh, jump here. He's up three spots into fourth, looking to get out of the back bumper of Chad Snyder. So good showing by that 27 so far. Chad looking like he had to back off there a little bit. Got a huge run into the draft going into that turn. Had to back off just a little bit to avoid any contact with him and the 77. But you see just how fast these cars draft with each other. He's right back up there on the bumper of the 77. As these guys now prefer the inside line, the, late, the race leaders including Louis Clark, were on that high line at the beginning of this race. Looks like Charlie Dickey trying to make a move back there, but now you can see they are dropping back down to that blue line. So again, this first stage, only 20 laps. David Lerfano struggling in the early moments here. He's down seven spots back to ninth. As it looks like Tyrone Yo Jr. and Larry Garns working together. They're going to try to make the pass on him. Put him outside the top ten. David might be uh, he, he, he might be in good shape though. I mean there's four stages to this race. You certainly don't want to get caught up in anything early on. So he's in some good shape. If there's anything we know about watching All-American Racing League. David Lerfano will make sure he's there at the end when it counts. So I'm not too worried about him. Another driver on the move, David Harris, started ninth. He's up into the top five, sitting in fifth. So as one Hillbilly Motorsports driver falls to the tail, another one up to the front. Joshua Hetrick behind Adam Angerstein. Looks like Cameron Harris is trying to make a move on Chad Snyder here. He's looking to go on the inside, but David Hara didn't look like he was dropping with him. Now he does. He's going to drop with Chad Snyder. Creeps back up behind the 27 car. Cameron Harris getting a huge run off of turn four onto the outside of Chad Snyder. That's the race for third. Adam Angerstein, though, in that black and green number nine car, he drops down to compliment the five car of Chad Snyder. Uh oh, and Cameron Harris getting into the back end of Chad Snyder. Adam Angerstein involved. And that is going to bring out caution number one. Joshua Hetrick involved in this as well. That's going to be an early fast repair for those four drivers as it looked like Chad Snyder might have just gotten up into that racing line of Cameron Harris. We're going to go back and take a look at this replay. As we take a look at those lap times that Chad Snyder was running there before 
that caution. Let's go back and take a look. Where do we want to start this from? Let's start with Adam Angerstein here. He's in the nine car. Nowhere for him to go. We see Chad Snyder getting involved in there. We'll take a closer look at what happened there. Let's get into the chase cam here of Chad Snyder. Go ahead and use our iRacing Rewind here just to get a better look at this moment right here coming out of turn two. And Chad just getting up onto the racing line of Cameron Harris. Oh, and as he came down, collected Joshua Hetrick. Josh was just trying to get down onto the infield there or uh, beneath the blue line, I should say, to try to avoid that. And unfortunately... Got picked up with Chad Snyder coming back down onto the track. So that is unfortunate for those four drivers. Louis Clark had the lead there, has had the lead since the opening, uh, the, the green flag drop, I should say. Now, I'm not too many. I'm not too sure how many fast repairs these guys have, but you certainly don't want to be the one using it this early on into the race. So these guys are gonna come down pit road. Chad for sure gonna have to do that. He got banged up pretty good. He's the first one down pit road, I would assume. There should be three other drivers coming down pit road. There's one, that's Cameron Harris. He had such a good run there. You could tell about a lap or two before that collision, Cameron Harris was going to get a run on Chad Snyder. And it just so happened right there, Chad, not really. He got a huge push out of turn two. And I don't think Chad really expected Cameron to get that much speed out of the corner exit, but he most certainly did. Chad tried to check up to try to avoid Cameron Harris to get that momentum, but it was just a little bit too late and a little bit too close. As those cars made contact and took two out of the way as well. Nothing Adam Angerstein could do. It happened all so fast in front of that number nine car. You could tell he tried hitting the brakes the best that he could. Locking him up at one point. But just unable to avoid any contact. Certainly getting his front end damage there. Let's go back and take a look at this. Joshua Hetrick. Oh. Well, we're not going to catch the beginning of that. I was hoping to see. Here we go. Here's the look. So he starts coming down onto the track, gets below that blue line, and just gets collected by Chad Snyder. Now, it looks like he might have gotten into Adam Angerstein anyways, but it looks like the front end of his car doing okay compared to the rest. Of course, one of the most important parts of your race car is that front as we do miss the restart to go back and see that Louis Clark half second lead on that restart to Patrick McQuay. Charlie Dickey though moving up to third after that caution so he's putting himself in some good track position here. Six laps until we go to our first stage break track position going to be everything here throughout the race Tyrone Yo Jr., another big winner, along with Larry Garns, up in that fifth and sixth spot. So these guys getting some good track position. We see 
Larry Garns getting a little bit loose off of turn four. I think he actually made contact with that wall. That's going to lose some pace and some spots. Johnny May and David Hare on the inside looking to feed off that mistake out of turn two. We'll see if they can get that inside line going between those two cars. And it looks like they're going to do just that. They're on the inside of Larry Garns. A very unforgiving track. If you get up high like that and you scrape the wall and lose that pace, you're going to lose some spots. Joshua Hetrick back in 10th after being involved in that accident. Looks like he did come down and use his quick repair. So the damage substantial enough. I was looking at the front end of his car. It didn't look too bad. But you certainly need aerodynamics here at a track like this when drafting is, is playing such a key role at these speedways. Cameron Harris wrapped up into that. He's back in 11th. Fred Houle 12th. Adam Angerstein, another driver. Now looks like Chad Snyder after that going a lap down. So that's unfortunate for that number five car. Not too sure what happened there. If he didn't want to use his uh, quick repair or not. But he's going to go multiple laps down now. Must have had his uh, quick repair unchecked. That is unfortunate. It does happen. Louis Clark, still your race leader, and Patrick McQuaid, still second place. When these guys get together, they definitely uh, uh, work really well with one another. We've seen it many times here as we do go to our first competition caution. There's going to be four stages. Here in this all-star race. Or maybe that wasn't a competition yellow. That was a pretty big wreck there. Chad Snyder again getting involved in that. Charlie Dickey involved. Larry Garns. Tyrone Yo Jr. being involved in this caution. Let's stay with Tyrone. We're going to go back to when the caution dropped right there. We saw Charlie Dickey hit the wall, lose some pace. That caused uh, Tyrone Yo to come down onto the track. Let's go back and take a look at this from the chase cam. Now, he had to come down to avoid Dickey, but you avoid a wreck to cause another one is what I say there. Unfortunately, getting into that car, Chad Snyder, that was on the bottom line there. So that is unfortunate. Charlie Dickey involved in this, as we said. He was in third place here when this happened. Let's go back and take a look at this from his angle. Oh, it's not going to give it to us. But he's certainly getting banged up in that as well. Oh! Charlie Dickey not really. Uh, there's one car left. Adam Angerstein. Charlie Dickey. Got to get that sorted out for sure. That's a tough one right there. I thought that was just the end of stage one. I do apologize to the viewers at home. That was a pretty nasty caution right there. Unfortunate position for Tyrone to be in. We saw it. We talked about it. Coming off that edge there, Charlie Dickey had came up too high, scraped the wall, losing a ton of pace. And Tyrone really having no choice to avoid Charlie's back bumper. He had to dive down low. But unfortunately, Chad Snyder was still trying to pick up his speed as he was coming off pit road that time around. And Tyrone collecting the right quarter panel of him. The rest is history. All those other cars wrapped up into that. So that is unfortunate right before we hit that first stage.
But we'll get these guys lined back up. I'm not too sure what that'll put us. I think only green flag laps are counting here towards the stages. So we'll have to take a look once this caution gets picked back up and we go back to green flag racing. We'll have to see how many laps are left before stage one is complete. But right now, Louis Clark, Patrick McQuaid still running one, two. But that number eight car of David Lorfano, after these cautions, finding his way back up into that third spot. So he makes his way back up towards the front of the pack. John Higgins Jr. behind him at fourth. And Johnny May up there in that top five. He's up eight spots. Good to see old Jenny May up there running high in the top five. David Hara behind him in sixth. Larry Garn seventh. Joshua Hetrick wrapped up in that first caution involving Chad Snyder and Cameron Harris. He's back up to eighth. Now, this isn't a points race, as we talked about, but there's still a lot of money on the line, and you certainly don't want to show up and, and do eye pacing. You want to do that as least as possible. So we'll see. Uh, we got some damage to that double zero car, it looks like, of Mr. May. But uh, we'll see if some frustration starts coming into play here. When you got this much money on the line, you definitely want to try to grab a piece of that pie. Right now, there's been two cautions here in the first stage in the early going. All righty, looks like we're going to get back to green flag racing here momentarily. As we try to sort things out, get everybody into the position that they need to. Race control being brought to you by Joshua Grossa here tonight. Been doing a fine job for, for All-American Racing League. Working out the kinks, first time race control. Been doing a good job. These guys are lined back up. They're bumper to bumper. We're going to get back to green flag racing here. Louis Clark to take the start, and he does. Look at David Lerfano on the inside, trying to get a run on Patrick McQuaid for P2. I'm not sure if he'll be able to do it, though. They're drag racing down into turn one. David onto the inside. Can he get the run as we only have one lap of this stage? John Higgins, Johnny May, that's fourth and fifth. Behind them, David Hara. Joshua Hetrick. There's Cameron Harris out of the outside of that 20 car of Larry Guards. He's trying to get back up to the front as he was battling Chad Snyder early on in this stage for third. So he's definitely got a fast car here at Charlotte. And he's wanting to prove that, that he can get back up to the front. Making the pass on Larry Garns. He's going to stay up high and work with David Hara. Gets past the 25 car of Joshua Hetrick. So Cameron on the move here. He's back up to P7. Got to be careful with that high line as they come out of turn four. Looked like he was pretty close to scraping that wall there. Now he's out of the back bumper of David Hara. I could be wrong. The stage could be 25 laps. Excuse me if that is the case. Of course, it's important to note what I what I said earlier was only green flags are counting. So even though it says lap 22 up there on the iRacing uh, live timing uh, ticker, that did include the caution lap. So that's going to get a little funky for us because uh, I'm not too sure how many laps we did spend under caution. But nonetheless, when it's all said and done, It'll all make sense, I promise. 
John Higgins putting in some work in that 19 car. He slides up to third, making the pass on David Lerfano. He's going to stay on that inside line. David Lerfano as well, both checking up onto the backstretch behind them. Johnny May. Still in that fifth spot, but Cameron Harris, David Hara, and Joshua Hetrick. All racing really close here. This is technically for sixth. David Hara on the inside of Cameron Harris. See if he can make that pass done as we all, as they're all looking for track position before stage one ends. That number 15 car not able to make the pass onto Cameron. So he's gonna hold on to that P6. That allowed Johnny May to get up a little bit more of a buffer between him and that pack. It looked like they were getting ready to storm on this double zero car, but racing side by side like that did kill a little bit of a pace. Now they're single file. Here comes the 27 car of Cameron Harris. He's looking to get out of the back end of that double zero car of Johnny May onto the back stretch down into turn three. Johnny dips down low, Cameron stays up high. And there's Cameron in the 27. He's gonna take over that inside line of Johnny May. This is four fifth. Cameron Harris making the pass, pushing up Johnny out of the high side. David Hara trying to follow suit. Johnny checks down low, shuts the door on the 15 car, down onto the back stretch. Johnny May is gonna keep out of that sixth spot and Joshua Hetrick on that high line now. He's on the outside of David Era. This is for seventh. Louis Clark, still your race leader. Patrick McQuaid still following him around in second. John Higgins Jr. still in third. He's got David Lerfano in that lucky dog detail in number eight car creeping up behind him. John Higgins Jr. having a run as he peeks his nose onto the inside. Seeing if he can get a run, maybe seeing if David Lerfano would follow suit. He decides to stay in line behind that 77 car of Patrick McQuaid for the time being. So right now, your top three drivers, Clark, McQuaid, Higgins Jr., Lerfano, Harris, May, three through six. Hera and Garn, 7th, 8th, and 9th. Adam Angerstein, gatekeeping that top 10. Tyrone Yo Jr., 11th. And Charlie Dickey, back there in 12th. So we get a shot of those top four drivers. You can see the gap they've been able to create for themselves. David Lerfano, a second and a half in front of Cameron Harris. But he's got, a, he's got a pack behind him as well. If David Hara and the rest of those guys can catch Cameron Harris, that's going to be a five-car draft trying to catch that top four. Be pretty interesting to see. But right now, Cameron Harris not even giving them the chance. He's looking very fast in that 27 car. Trying to work his way back up to that top four, top three. Louis Clark going to have to do some mirror driving here. John Higgins pushing that 77 of Patrick McQuay to the back bumper of Louis Clark. Onto the front, onto the front stretch and the back stretch. They really start closing that gap uh, between themselves and Louis Clark. But on the turns, Louis doing so good. Getting all that mo momentum into the uh, entry of the corners. And starts pulling away. So you see them close that gap there on the front stretch. Now watch this gap that Louis creates for himself through the turns. John Higgins Jr. going to break that trap though and go out of the inside. Nope. You rethought that decision. Check back up high. Probably a smart move there on that number 19 car. 
Once you lose the draft like this, especially if David Lerfano, it looked like he was going to stay up high. I think John recognized that, so he checked back up high. You certainly don't want to lose the draft at a speedway like this. We saw it happen with David Lerfano at the beginning of this race when he got stuck on that high side. Everybody came down low. You just get gobbled up by the rest of the field. We check back in with the fifth place driver, Cameron Harris. Out there on his own and keeping pace, being consistent there. David Hara really not being able to catch up to that 27 car. So once we get done with this final stage, or this first stage, excuse me, and get bunched back up, I look for Cameron Harris to shoot right back up into that podium status. Try to give some of these guys up front a run for their money. Literally here tonight at the All-Star Race, Truckers Feed America Cup Series, presented by Top Sail Trucking. Tonight's sponsor, Cutting Edge Forge out of Wingate, North Carolina. Arts and Craft Store on Facebook. Or you can visit them at www.cuttingedgeforge.com. Looks like Louie now really starting to get some good separation. Even on the front, uh, even on the stretches. That's where Patrick McQuaid and John Higgins was really working the draft to be able to keep pace with that 73 car. But now it looks like Louie in full control of this race right before stage one ends. David Lerfano, P4. See just how good of a run John gets in this draft. But you can't just slide out of the draft and try to make a move. It just don't work like that with these cars on these speedways. You just got to lift and stay in line. It's all about patience here with these next gen cars. Johnny May having a really good night for himself. Currently P7, but he's up six spots since uh, the beginning of this race. Having himself a good run here in stage one. Joshua Hetrick, though, on the inside in the Orlan Care 25 car. Now remember, Joshua involved in a pretty nasty wreck earlier on in the race, having to come down and using his fast repair uh, relatively early on into the race. He's going to have to make sure he tries to avoid anything moving forward. Behind them, Larry Garns in that 20 car. He's got a couple of scratches on his paint as well. Adam Angerstein involved in that big wreck. There's Freddie Hull. Oh, back from below that uh, blue line there. And we see just a tough night for Chad Snyder. I'm pretty sure he's called it. He's 27 laps plus down, so not the night that he was looking for. We talked to him a little bit before the race. He's trying to find any kind of momentum, any kind of footing with these next-gen cars. And it's unfortunate, wrapped up in two uh, of the cautions here tonight. I think that first incident that he was involved in, 
he had his uh, quick repair unchecked because he stayed down in pit road and went about four laps down. So that's just unfortunate. The 59 car, Fred Houle, once this stage breaks, he'll get that lap back via Lucky Dog, I believe. And so he'll get back on the lead lap. Now, I think that last caution that we had was so close to that stage one. I think we finished stage one already. That was a little bit confusing because we had that big pile up, that big wreck. But these guys have been out there on the track under green for a relatively long time. So that's what I'm going with. That's what I'm assuming. I think we are in stage two, which is going to be 25 laps before we get to the big stage of 30 laps in that third one and of course our fourth stage only being 15 laps so certainly in that 30 lap stage track position is going to be key you're definitely going to see a lot of these guys go all out try to get as as much position as they can 15 laps is not a very long time to end the race We see John Higgins, he keeps eyeing that inside line, but he knows he doesn't have any help on the back end there. David Lerfano, about .65 seconds off of uh, John Higgins. So there's certainly no no chance of him being able to break that draft and, and try to make a real run onto Patrick McQuaid. He's kind of prisoner of the draft right now. And there is our caution. And that is the end of the stage right there, 45 laps in. So that should be the end of our second stage. Hey, Louie, it's uh, faded up in the booth. You got a copy? Yo, man. Hey, so as we end the second stage here, talk to me a little bit. You've had the race lead since the green flag drop. What can you tell me about Charlotte right now and how you're feeling uh, going into stage three? Charlotte? It feels more to me like Daytona. Nah, man, nah. It's uh, flat out, tired now, a bit worn. We've been on these 45 laps, um... We're starting to drive it as in coming off the gas now. Um, sorry, two seconds. I've got team radio. Um, sorry, faded. Uh, yeah, so... No, the, the crack feels good. The car feels brilliant at the moment. Um, yeah. yeah. It, it looks pretty brilliant up there as well. Of course, being able to avoid all that carnage uh, in that first stage there. Um, so what, what's it going to take to be able to stay out front there? It looks like Patrick McQuaid and John Higgins working really well together, but just not being able to catch that back bumper of the Project Dynamic 73. Yeah, man. Well, so, um, I, we're working with, uh, the 77, trying to anyway. Um, we're trying to just work together, trying to keep our one, two. We seem to, uh, we seem to go really well together, really. Yeah, I said that on the broadcast booth as well. Anytime you guys are able to link up there, it seems to be a good show. Uh, Louis, I uh, apologize for dragging you out, but I wanted to get your thoughts on the race so far. Good luck in the next two stages. Cheers, yeah, man. I lost the spot in pit. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you just got to do the interviews raw. Pull them out under caution. Louie dropping back to fourth after that. I'm sure he'll blame us here in the broadcast booth like Louie will. Now, nah, Louie's a good friend of the broadcast here. Love having that guy around. But, like he said, lo losing a couple of spots. Adam Angerstein, Charlie Dickey. Looks like they're in charge of that front row right now, sitting one and two. So, we're going to have some new blood up here. On the restart, Adam Angerstein, Charlie Dickey holding it down in row one.
So we'll see how this plays into effect here. Now this is gonna be the big stage that we've been talking about. This is gonna be 30 laps. So we did a 20 lap stage. Of course, that ended under a true caution with that first big wreck that we had. We just finished up a 25 lap stage to complete the second one. Now, this is the long one. This is gonna be 30 laps here before we go down to a 15 lap final stage. John Higgins Jr. Going to be second. I, I, the display had, had said Charlie Dickey uh, was going to be up there in two, but he's actually going to go to the end of the, the lead lap there with Fred Hull. So he might have gotten uh, EOL for something. Not too sure what was going on with that, but it's actually going to be uh, John Higgins Jr. taking that place up there in second. Louis Clark third. Cameron Harris. We talked about him. I really feel like in Adam Angerstein, it looks like he's... He's dropping back a little bit, too. I'm not too sure what's going on with my uh, iRacing live timing, so we'll just leave that alone for a little bit. But I do want to talk about Cameron Harris. He was battling um, Chad Snyder for third. Chad Snyder was in P3. He came up high a little bit. Cameron Harris looked like he was starting to gain a lot of speed out there out of the track. He got involved in that incident. He had to pit. He came out. He's been fighting his way back up to the front ever since. You see him at the top of your screen right there in that white and orange car right behind John Higgins Jr. This is going to be his shot to, to captivate that speed that he had in the early stage. And I think he's got the speed to be able to keep up with that 73 car of Louis Clark. Now, behind those guys, David Herrick going to be starting on the inside of that third row. Joshua Hetrick in six. David Lofano behind teammate David Hera going to be restarting P7. That's important. Patrick McQuaid all the way back to eighth. We talked to Louis Clark during the stage break. He had talked about how he was working with that 77 Chevrolet of McQuaid. He's no longer going to have that buddy up there with him as McQuaid comes out of pit road seventh. David Lerfano going to be on the outside of row four in eighth. Larry Garns and Tyrone Yo Jr. going to be rounding out the top ten as we get back to green flag racing. Adam Angerstein with a good jump there when it goes green, but you already see that 73 car of Louis Clark out of the inside, down onto the back stretch. It looks like he's going to take over that lead. John Higgins Jr. following suit along with David Hera, but we know Louis likes that outside line. That's what he took on both the restarts so far. I was interested to see if he was going to stay up high. Looks like he came down low with the 19 and the 15. So, Louis Clark back up to the front just like that. John Higgins Jr. following suit as well. He had a lot of good pace there, especially in that second stage as he was running P3 behind Patrick McQuaid. Cameron Harris actually losing some pace on that restart, contrary to what I, was, uh, I believed he was going to shoot up. He actually falls back. He's back down to seventh, along with Adam Angerstein. Adam started pole on this restart. He's back to eighth. So trouble for that nine car as far as keeping pace with the rest of these guys. Your top three right now, Clark Higgins and Hera. David Hera picking up his first win at All-American Racing League earlier this season. Looking to capitalize on that. That is your regular season points leader right now. Of course, tonight being the all-star race, no points on the line, just a whole lot of greenbacks, but he's still looking for a good finish. Nonetheless, as all of these drivers are. Now, as I'm talking, Patrick McQuaid in the 77 car, back up to the front. Remember, he started P8 on this stage. He's all the way up to P4, looking to get on the outside of David Hera to get back up with that 73 car. Joshua Hetrick, David Lurfano on the tail end of this first pack. That's a good view of it right now. You see just how spread out these two packs are. You definitely don't want to get left in the dust here. Oh, and on the inside, David Heron knocking to the outside of John Higgins Jr. in the 19. And that's for sure going to bring out a caution. David Hera getting out of the door of the 19. Johnny May coming in, giving him a good smack. 
And that's going to be our first caution of stage three, and it's a big one. Let's just back it up here. I racing rewind. As we'll see, the 15 car of David Herrick jumping down onto the inside. Now let's pause it. And get a nice clean look of this. There we see David Harris starting to go on to the inside. Let's back it up just a little bit. Coming off the of turn two here, onto the back stretch. David Hara gets a good run, goes down to the inside. And it looked like it looked like the 15 may be going up, but the 19 as well. I think both these guys had side draft in their minds. One went up, one went down, and uh, the rest was history right there. So unfortunately, though, for, for uh, Higgins, catching the back end of that, he gets into the 25 of Hetrick back up to the wall, runs into Larry Garns who pushes him down right into the double zero car of Johnny May. So we've seen that a couple of times tonight. A couple of these drivers thinking they're safe, trying to uh, miss the wreck up top, going down low, and unfortunately the cars just come sliding down on a track like this. This track is 45 feet wide, but you get up onto these, uh, these banked curves here after a crash, you're just sliding down. So a tough break for all those cars involved, but maybe none more than John Higgins Jr. in that 19 Chevrolet. As it looked like he had, for sure, a top three car. Once he uh, finally got past Patrick McQuaid by default with that last uh, caution for the stage, looked like he was getting ready to give Louis Clark a run for his money. David Hera, though, thought the same. Got out of the inside. Those two cars collect one another. And John Higgins Jr. certainly taking the worst end there as as uh, David Hera being able to keep that P2. Now, on the inside of row two is Patrick McQuaid. We talked to Louis Clark. These guys are in team chat. They are working together. But on the outside, that uh, blue-gray custom uh, plastic fabrication of David Hera has his teammate, David Lurfano behind him on the outside. Cameron Harris also on the outside. He's shown a lot of speed here tonight. So that high line might get a good enough run here to make things interesting. Adam Angerstein behind Patrick McQuaid backing up that inside line. So this is going to be a very crucial restart as all these guys up top either have teammates that they're working with or very fast cars behind them to back each other up. And we'll find out momentarily how this is going to play out here as these guys get back to go to green flag racing. There's Louis Clark with a huge jump. You see Patrick McQuaid glued to the back bumper there on the restart before just a tiny little bit of separation. And that outside line just getting eaten up on that restart. So there's that teamwork we talked about. Louis Clark probably into the headset of Patrick McQuaid, letting him know exactly when he was going to go full throttle on that restart. You can see both those cars pretty much fluently uh, getting a big jump on the restart.
Both Davids, though, looking to get a good run here. They could probably use Adam Angerstein to catch up just a little bit, try to get a three-car draft. They're going to need it right now as this entire field is in a single file run here in the early going after that restart. Lap 54 out of 90. This is the 30 stage, uh, the 30 lap stage. And here comes Hillbilly Motorsports. David Hera in the 15. David Lerfano in the 8. Out of the back bumper of the 77 of Patrick McQuaid. On to the front stretch. Let's see how big of a run these two can get. And if they decide to break the draft of the two leaders to try to get their own going, there's David Hare on the inside, looking for the eight card to follow suit, and he does. We're too wide out of the back stretch. David Hare on the inside of Patrick McQuaid. Nope, has to check back up high. These guys really going to have to uh, get in. Oh, and we're under caution. Tyrone Yo, Larry Garns, and Fred Hool in the back of the pack. Looks like Joshua Hetrick might be involved in this as well. Let's go back, take a look at the replay. Oh, and it just happened right in front. That's Freddie Hool getting a little too high. And we see the carnage there. Joshua Hetrick having a heck of a night. Larry Guards, Tyrone Jr. as well. Looks like Charlie Dickey's safe from that. So pretty early caution after that stage three restart. That's going to slow things back down. And that's going to give both Davids another shot at this. Louis Clark, Patrick McQuaid was such a huge jump on the last restart. Of course, we both we know those guys working together there. So definitely an advantage for them. But this time, Patrick McQuaid going to be on the outside of Louis Clark. So they're still going to be able to share information as far as when Louis is going to take this green flag but it's not going to be as dominant as the last restart was as Patrick McQuaid started third last time right behind that 73 car. So these guys having to come down pit road now trying to catch the back end of the field. Right there on the back stretch, heading into turn three, and there comes the rest of the field. Freddie Hool, Larry Garns, I think Tyrone Yo Jr. Yep, now these guys are off pit road. Cameron Harris decided to come down as well. I don't think he was involved in that wreck. I could have been wrong, though, but I did not see that. But he elected to come down pit road nonetheless. And those guys racing back to the back of the field. So we'll see how interesting this restart can be. As all the guys working together are now side by side. Rather than in front or behind each other. So this should play out a little bit more interesting. We'll see what happens here. If Louis Clark can get a good enough jump. My, my guess is Louis Clark going to get a big jump here. And try to get in front of that 77 and check up high as fast as he can. It'd be a lot easier to do that than to rely on Patrick McQuaid being able to sandbag the restart and, and jump down low behind Louis Clark because Louis going to have David Hera right on his bumper. So that's what I assume we see on this restart. Louis going to get a good jump. He's going to dive up high in front of that 77, and we'll see how it plays out. Louis Clark leading every green flag lap here at Charlotte in the All-American Racing League All-Star Race. Triple digit prize money on the line. Not everybody in the league 
joining here tonight, but they still had 14 cars show up for this prize money race. And all the hitters here tonight. David Hera, Lafano, Louis Clark, McQuaid, Higgins Jr., Cameron Harris. Here comes this restart right here. Now we'll see. 73 out to a start. We'll see if he checks up high. It looks like there's a good enough gap there, and there was for for the 77 to kind of check down low, but Louis did go up high there. They sort of met at the middle of the track, but that's golden if you're both those drivers. That's exactly what they wanted. Adam Angerstein, Johnny May, definitely going to have to work together here. They don't want to lose sight of David Lerfano's bumper as right now the two, four, and six cars right there, all with a little bit of a buffer between them. Angerstein up high, Johnny May down low. They go side by side down the back stretch. That's what you don't want as you're really going to have to stay in the draft to be able to keep up with these top four drivers right now. So those guys losing a little bit of pace. On to the backstretch. Lap 58 out of 90. Both Davids trying to work together to catch race leader Louis Clark working alongside the 77 car of Patrick McQuaid. And here comes the run, but David Hera getting a little bit too much onto the wall. David Lerfano, unfortunately, tagging bumpers there. We'll see just how hard that hit plays out. Hopefully not any real damage out of that eight car, but nonetheless, certainly losing the pace of the leaders. Certainly not what you wanted to see happen if you're part of the Hillbilly Motorsports camp. David Hara getting such a good run off that turn, getting up high. David Lerfano having to hit the brakes on that one. Lucky to stay uh, P3 and P4. Looks like David Lerfano, no front end damage there as he takes the inside of teammate David Hera and Johnny May Cameron Harris now working on the inside these two are linking up but maybe David Hera the one with the damage we should have been worried about as it looked like he almost just sacrificed his position to let teammate David Lerfano through. David Hare, though, is still out on the track. Cameron Harris now P4, working his way around Johnny May. Now he's got that number eight car in his sights out of the inside of turn three. Can the 27 car of Cameron Harris reclaim that third spot? And yes, he can. Looks like he's going to get that done. Checks back up high in front of the eight of David Lerfano. So Cameron Harris on the move. This was the guy I said we need to keep our eyes out on. Before that wreck with Chad Snyder, he just showed so much speed and pace out here at Charlotte. He's going to take over that third spot from David Lerfano. Behind David, you still got Johnny May. Don't leave out that number 19 car of John Higgins Jr., He's had a heck of a run here tonight. Got wrapped up in an incident a few laps ago under caution. So he's looking to reclaim that top spot. Was running third for a long time. As high as P2 behind Louis Clark. So he certainly has the speed to get it done. At least for the podium. For the money. Twenty-five laps to go here in the All-Star Race. Now we will have one more competition yellow. We will have one last stage break before finishing it out with 15 laps to go. So all these drivers 
10 more laps before that break. Trying to get as much track position as they can. I would assume the majority of these drivers are going to come down pit road after this 30 lap stint. Grab some new tires, splash of gas to make it those 15 laps. So it's really going to be a very important uh, pit stop. As you see Johnny May getting on the inside of David Lerfano. Doesn't get much closer than that. A good run by Johnny May. Cameron Harris, look at this. Closing in the gap on second place driver Patrick McQuaid and Louis Clark gets under a half second. Here comes the DoorDash 27 Toyota Camry of Cameron Harris on the move. Onto the outside of Patrick McQuaid. On the back stretch. Down into turn three, still on the outside. And he's going to complete the pass. He's right back out of the bumper of Louis Clark. And he might take over the race lead here. Louis Clark with some real competition out here. The 27 car of Cameron Harris out of the outside. Coming out of turn two, out of the back stretch. The 27 car does make the pass. We have a new race leader here at Charlotte. It's Cameron Harris. Out of that high side there, you want to be careful carrying that momentum off turn four. Definitely don't want to scrape the wall. Cameron Harris does it. He's going to lead a lap. A phenomenal race by Cameron Harris. As we just talked about, all the way up to P3 at one point. Got into a couple of wrecks himself. Had to come down pit road. Started a couple of these restarts towards the back of the pack. And he's been patient, working his way up through the field. And now dominating the race here. So Louis, second place. Patrick McQuaid drops the third. We got Johnny May, John Higgins Jr., David Lerfano. This is fourth, fifth, and sixth right here. Six laps to go before the stage break. We know that 19 car of John Higgins has pace to come home with a podium. Once this stage breaks, everybody comes down pit road and comes out. We're going to refile these guys double wide. It's going to be a whole new race for 15 laps as some of these guys starting to make their way up back towards the front. What a good run by that double zero Ford Mustang of Johnny May. Tyrone Yo Jr. in seventh. David Harrod dropping back to eighth after he scraped the wall. Of course, still plenty of race left for him to make a move. Five laps before the stage break. That's what he's looking forward to. Fred Hool into the top ten. He's had a rough night as well. And I think these guys back here... No, everybody on the lead lap. Okay, that's awesome. Cameron Harris with such an impressive run to the top. Louis and Patrick have got to be shocked. Louis leading all laps under green up until that point. Cameron Harris looking for his first win here at All-American Racing League. Why not be the money race, the all-star race? Presented by Truckers Feed America Series. Sponsored by Top Sail Trucking. Coming up onto some lap traffic now. It looks like Cameron Harris losing a ton of pace there. Working his way around and here comes the 73 of Louis Clark. Looks like Cameron almost had to lift there for a second. Try to figure out what that number nine car of Adam Angerstein was going to do. And we got a race for first place here before this stage break. Only two laps to go. Cameron Harris eats the wall. 
He's down onto the infield. That's your race leader. That is going to go under caution. His saving grace. I don't think I Racing would have called that. Of course, we do have race control here at All American Racing League. I don't know if I Racing would have called that on a track like this, coming down into the infield. He was real no. He was no real threat to anybody else out onto the track. Cameron Harris counting his blessings on that before the stage break. Going to be able to stay on the lead lap with that caution being thrown. Certainly not what he wanted. We catch the tail end of that. Coming off at of turn four. We talked about it just a few laps ago. Cameron really likes that high side, but he liked it a little too high there on that one. Came out of turn four, too much momentum. Maybe tire wear. He did run through that pack like it was nothing. Maybe burned up a little bit too much tires there and not having the grip to be able to turn his left as he wanted. And eating that wall. Could have been much worse for the rest of the field, though. It's actually a blessing for the rest of the field that when he hit that wall, it shot him down to the infield. Nobody else is going to be involved in that. Especially for guys like Louis Clark and Patrick McQuaid who are right behind that. So we're going to end this stage under caution. These drivers are going to come down at least one final time for sure to get a, a set of tires and some fuel. This pit stop means everything. Only 15 laps on this stage four. Off of pit road, it looks like Louis Clark going to be your race leader. Patrick McQuaid still behind him. Now, John Higgins Jr. in third. We talked about him for a little bit there before that stage break. He's had a lot of speed here at Charlotte. He couldn't quite get past the 77 car of Patrick McQuaid, though. He was a prisoner of that draft, as we talked about. And Cameron Harris coming out fourth. Now, Cameron's able to use that fast repair. So he's going to have a shiny new car. We see a little bit of damage on John Higgins Jr., though, but I don't think that's enough to be concerning. We got both Davids, David Lurfano and David Hera, fifth and sixth. Johnny May, seventh. Tyrone moves up a spot after that. He's back in eighth. Charlie Dickey on the lead lap. He's up two spots in the ninth. And Fred Hool in tenth. So 15 laps will decide who's your all-star winner, taking home the money, taking home the bragging rights. And I think this is going to be one heck of a finish. I certainly don't think this is going to be our last caution. Things are going to get real heated up here towards the front. As these guys that are in the top six right here, certainly capable of making a run at this combination of Louis Clark and Patrick McQuaid. John Higgins Jr., Cameron Harris, obviously proven that as he stormed his way up to the front, making it look easy. David Lerfano and David Hera being able to come down pit road on that caution and use his quick repair. He's back to 100%. Those guys knowing how to work with each other up to the front of the field. Of course, David Lerfano being last season's champion. He's got a race win under his belt. He won at Daytona. David Harris got a win under his belt as well. So certainly, this race is yet to be decided. No slouches here in the top six, top eight.
We'll see if Johnny May can work his way into the top five, pick up one of his best finishes of the season here at the All-Star Race. Tyrone Yo Jr. as well. He's got a shot for a respectable finish here. Before we start this stage, we'd like to shout out a partner of the broadcast, Maconi Setup Shops. Use Faded TV for 15% off all products, subscriptions, and coaching. If you're looking how to build up your own settings, Maconi Setup Shops offering coaching for that. Some of the best setups in the business. They do setups for some of the Coca-Cola racing guys. So look them up today, Maconi Setup Shops, and use code Faded TV at checkout for 15% off. Getting ready to go back to green flag racing. We'll see if that 19 car can get a good jump. You see them right there getting ready, getting prepared. Certainly not wanting to spin any tires. The most important restart of the race starts now, and it starts with Louis Clark. Louis with the jump. John Higgins with a little bit of a spin there, I think. But Louis with such a huge jump in that Project Dynamic 73 car. Patrick McQuaid out of the outside. We'll see if Louis stays up there. He does. John, though, really looking to get that inside line working. Trying to check up in front of Patrick McQuaid, and he does. That was a good move by that 19 car. I'm not too sure if Patrick had to lift to avoid that. Oh, and David Lofano getting out of the, the inside of the 77 car. Of Patrick McQuaid. You see a couple of other cars behind that as well. Let's go back and take a look. David Lofano on the left corner panel. That's the 02 car of Tyrone Yo, Larry Garns. That was a pretty big one for some of those drivers, especially Patrick McQuaid, who looked like he was a favorite for a podium all night long. He's going to go down pit road here while it's closed. That might be a penalty for that 77 car. See Tyrone Yo Jr. getting back onto the track there. He's been caught up with some bad luck here tonight as well. And it looks like the 77 car has a blown engine he might not even make it back to his pit stall that is going to be terrible news for the 77 and louis clark that was his drafting buddy the, these guys working together this entire race and that is sad and bad news for patrick mcquade who's ran strong all night long you see him limping down pit road trying to get into his pit box to use that fast repair david lerfano the guy who wrecked him drives on by oh and that is just so unlucky for the 77 car he's gonna have to take a tow back to his pit box we all know what that means time is Lost, and in this case, in the all star race, time is money. So, the good news for some of these drivers, like Cameron Harris, that's Patrick McQuaid out of the race. He's going to be starting P3, John Higgins Jr. P2. So he's going to be on the outside of Louis Clark. Now I talked about this in another race. You almost want to be starting P3 on these restarts. It's so hard to be on the outside of the race leader. You're looking left. You're trying to get a you're not trying to uh pass the leader. You certainly don't want to get a black flag on the restart. So you're trying to stay behind the race leader at the same time. You're holding down your button, looking left the whole time, trying to anticipate when that leader is going to go flat out on the restart so i always prefer starting p3 rather than p2 john higgins jr might have a tough go here on the restart but if he could time it just right he's gonna have david Hare on the outside with him i think that 15 car is due for a good run in these final laps that 27 though is going to be awfully dangerous that's cameron harris starting on the inside 
behind race leader Louis Clark. The second best seat in the house right there in P3. Now, a lot of these guys, most of these guys, if not all of them, came down after that 30-lap stage. That means these guys have fresh tires. They only had 15 laps, so you're certainly not saving any tires. You don't have a long green flag run. If there's one thing we saw, Cameron Harris on fresh sets of tires working his way up to the front during that stage three before uh, uh, wrecking himself. We'll see if he can... Uh, imitate that and get back past Louis Clark. Johnny May into the top five. Charlie Dickey finding himself up into that top six. Can he make a run and get into the top five? Most certainly one of his best finishes of the season. Fred Houle, Larry Garn, 7th and 8th. David Lerfano did come down pit road after that incident. Here's the green flag. Louis Clark taking another strong jump. Cameron Harris into the 27 on the inside. Looks like he had a pretty good jump as well. You see that outside line just get gobbled up right off the rip. That's John Higgins and David Hera. Louis fighting that draft of Cameron Harris. You see him dip down low there. That's to try to eliminate the slipstream between himself and that 27 car of Cameron Harris. He knows Cameron has the speed to make the pass. Louis Clark in a, in a difficult task here. Going to have to do some defensive driving on this 27 car. Do the best that he can to try to avoid that 27. Getting a big run into the draft. We'll see if he does the same thing here. He does. He stays down low. And so far, good call. Cameron might have to start following Louis Clark down low which is not his strength on the track. Cameron likes that high side. He's fast on that high side. Louis Clark knows it, so Louis starts going on the inside line on that back stretch to get Cameron a little bit out of his comfort zone. And we are under caution. Patrick McQuaid, Charlie Dickey. That's sad for Charlie. He was in the top six on that restart let's go back and take a look see what happened between the 77 car and the 37 car patrick on the outside oh and it's charlie dickey getting a little too high we've seen that by multiple drivers multiple times here tonight off of turn four specifically just getting a little bit too high of a run smacking that wall coming down onto the 77 car of patrick mcquaid and once the bad luck starts it never stops and patrick is learning that right now in that muffler man car that is just unfortunate go back and take a look at this from a different angle you see the 37 car just getting a little bit loose on that high side, trying to keep it together, not able to, drifts up high, eats the wall, gets out of the back of that quarter panel of, of McQuaid. So now the roles are reversed a little bit. Cameron Harris now going to be on that outside line, having the tough task of trying to uh, keep up with Louis Clark on the restart and it's actually going to be john higgins jr now starting p3 on the inside so those guys swapping positions since the last restart david harris still remains that fourth place driver johnny may fifth david lerfano moving up to sixth after uh, charlie dickey relinquishes that after that wreck adam anger seen up to seventh larry garns eighth Top five drivers do receive a payout here in the All-Star Race. So Johnny May, David Lerfano, Adam Angerstein, all trying to get to that top five, trying to collect some of that bread before the night's over.
Now, we've seen Louis Clark be dominant on these restarts all night long, but since Cameron Harris and John Higgins Jr. has made themselves known towards the front of this pack, he struggled to keep this race lead. Cameron and John both proving that they have the speed to be able to make a run at first place. Certainly, Louis, a little bit of pressure on him this go-around. David Hara in that 15 car, again, we spoke about him a little bit. He does have a race win here at All-American Racing League this season. He's certainly looking to cash out in the podiums. He's starting P4. That high line coming out of turn four has been the Achilles heel for a couple of these drivers, including... The, the guy starting second, Cameron Harris, the guy who I feel like has what it takes to be able to beat Louis Clark here, getting a little bit <clears throat> too high in stage three coming off that wall. Some of these guys are going to have to discipline themselves on that high side to make sure they don't get too high and hit that wall. We've seen it here multiple times here tonight. And with this much money on the line, certainly wanting to correct those little mistakes. Louis Clark, he's got John Higgins Jr. on the inside. Cameron Harris going to be working with David Hara on the outside. We'll go around at least one more time. Under caution in the Truckers Feed America Cup Series All-Star Race at Charlotte presented by Top Sail Trucking. This is All-American Racing League and you're watching it live on twitch.com slash faded TV. John Higgins warming up his tires there. That's probably nerves more than anything. Making sure he keeps his focus. Here's Cameron Harris now. Going to take that outside. That means one lap to green. We'll get these cars bunched back up. Double file. And we'll get back to green flag racing. A big shout out to Cutting Edge Forge, CuttingEdgeForge.com for sponsoring tonight's race. It's been a good one. Located out of Wingate, North Carolina. Down the back stretch, which could be for the final time under caution. As the laps start dwindling down, these drivers know they're running out of time. And the race favorite, Louis Clark, be dethroned. Cameron Harris, John Higgins Jr., David Hara. Certainly hope so. And that's that disadvantage I was talking about with that outside line. Cameron Harris given a lot of space there with Louie Clark so that he can make sure he sees when Louie takes that restart. So you're already giving up a half a car to a full car's length on that outside line. We'll see if Cameron can keep pace on the outside. John Higgins Jr. on the inside in that 19 car. He's going to take over second place. These guys fall single file. Higgins Jr., Cameron Harris, David Hara, second, third, and fourth. Behind Harris, teammate David Lafano on the outside in the eight car. He's looking to make a late race push with his teammate in the 15. Johnny May on the inside in the double zero car trying to make a move with David Lafano. That's for fifth. David Lafano wrapping that up onto the front stretch. He's right behind teammate David Hara. We'll see if those guys can work together here. Ten laps to go. Cameron Harris still on the outside. David Hara on the inside. He's got his teammate backing him up. John Higgins Jr. chasing down Louis Clark. Louis Clark still dropping down to that blue line, trying to break and separate that slipstream between himself and John Higgins Jr. If there's anybody who knows defensive driving better, it is Louis Clark. He, of course, being an endurance racer in the GT3 series, Certainly knows all about drafting and slipstream and how to avoid all that. 
And that 73 car still in the lead. Nine laps to go. David Hera in the 15 on the inside of John Higgins Jr. David Lafano making contact with the 19 as they come down the back stretch, down into turn three. It's the Hillbilly Motorsports teammates in the 15 and the eight taking over second and third. Cameron Harris falling way off pace. He's back into seventh. Johnny May out of the inside of John Higgins Jr. He's got Adam Angerstein and Cameron Harris to work with on that inside line as these guys come out of turn two onto the back stretch. Down into turn three. We could get four wide here at Charlotte. The 27 car pushing the double zero of John Higgins Jr. And here comes the 15 car of David Hera right onto the back bumper of Louis Clark. David Lerfano on the inside, all the way down on that blue line. We'll see where these guys decide to make their attack. Louis Clark, you still see, dipping down on the inside. He's going to do that until the race is over, just trying to break the draft. Doing a phenomenal job right now, holding on to the race lead is Louis Clark. David Hera, though, smells the blood in the water. Trying to take over race lead for the first time here tonight. Back behind those guys, we got a race brewing for fourth. Johnny May, Cameron Harris, Johnny, uh, John Higgins Jr., I apologize. Trying to work his way back up there. Those were two of my race favorites. And we, oh, we got another caution. John Higgins Jr. involved in this. That's Adam Angerstein that we're on right now. And that's a tough break for that 19 car. Let's take a look, Adam Angerstein just getting onto the left quarter panel hill. He goes for a ride, actually had to get towed to the pits. Oh, and Charlie Dickey getting wrapped up into that as well. That's certainly something you don't wanna see. A lot of front end damage taken by there. Let's go back and take a look at this replay. See if we can go back and, and, and watch the chase cam here. John working to the outside. That nine car just getting up a little bit too high on the racing line. Nothing intentional, of course, but the, the thing about these next gen cars for sure is uh, trying to keep that side draft. It's, it's very important to keep the side draft when you can't draft single file. And that's, I think, what those guys were trying to do. That's why they were so close to one another. But we've seen that play out just like that a couple of times here tonight. Hopefully my mic not cutting off my voice. We did get a little bit loud there. Sometimes uh, the microphone will, uh, if, it's, if it's too loud, will cut off. Hopefully you guys didn't miss any of those calls. As we just had an action-packed couple of laps. Six laps to go here under caution. Louis Clark trying to defend first place. <clears throat> He's had a couple of challengers here tonight. Cameron Harris, John Higgins Jr., Looks like after that, John Higgins, he's going to drop back to P12. His night is all but done. That's unfortunate. Cameron Harris, he's going to be starting P5, but certainly not where he wants to be. He had a pretty bad uh, restart that last go around. Johnny May up nine spots in that double zero car up to fourth. He's looking to get into the podium right now. He's in the money for sure. We got both teammates, David Lerfano, David Hera, sitting second and third.
Inside the cockpit of the number eight car, David Lerfano, he's gonna be taking this. In that third spot. His teammate up there in the front row on the outside. Johnny May gonna be on the outside of David Lerfano, P4. Cameron Harris, fifth. We're going to go around one more time. Looks like we're extending the caution here. And I believe, as I said prior, only green flags are counting here at the All-Star Race. That's why it still says six laps to go. That's one thing they wanted to implement here in the All-Star Race. So, when we do get back to green flag racing, there's still plenty of racing left for these guys to make a late race push. Of course, we're talking about David Lerfano, Johnny May, Cameron Harris, Adam Engerstein back in sixth, Patrick McQuaid in seventh. We'll see how much room David Hera gives himself to be able to see the 73 car on the outside. On the last restart, it was Cameron Harris in this spot, and we saw him give up almost a car length to Louis Clark. We see David Hera giving him about a half a car length here. That's so that they can at least see a little bit of Louis Clark and when he jumps on this restart. And there it is. Teammates racing side by side down into turn one. It looks like advantage, David Lerfano, and it is. And David Harris is gonna get on that outside. Left out to dry there maybe. Johnny May, Cameron Harris, Patrick McQuaid all sticking together on that inside line. It looks like David Lerfano pushing up high hoping he can grab a little bit of that 15 Chevrolet. So as always, a good restart for Louis Clark, four laps to go. Here comes the eight car of David Lofano, trying to track down the race leader and pick himself an all-star race win. Cameron Harris in third, he's worked his way back up. And here comes the 27. Being pushed by David Hera. Three laps to go. Is it going to be a little bit too late? We don't know. David Lafano right out of the back bumper of Louis Clark. Will he pick up enough momentum out of the draft to make a run here? Watch out for that 27 car coming out of turn four. Two laps to go. That, of course, is exactly what Louis Clark wants to see in his rearview mirror right now. Too wide racing. As you see, because of that, the gap that he was able to create. But here comes teammate David Hera out of the back of that eight car. They're on the inside line working together, trying to get that lucky dog detail in number eight car up to the front of the race. Cameron Harris drops the P4 as David Hera gets a good run. On the final lap. Last lap of the All-Star Race, it's Clark, Lofano, and Hera, top three. Coming out of turn two, onto the back stretch, Louis Clark looking to avoid. You see him go all the way down and now back up. You see Cameron Harris on the inside of David Hera. I think they're going to connect. I think they did. Cameron Harris on the final lap taking over that second place as he dumped the 15 car of David Hera. And Louis Clark, your All-Star winner. Unofficially, Cameron Harris, P2, Johnny May, third, Adam Angerstein, fourth, Joshua Hetrick, fifth, and both David Lerfano and David Hera out of the money. We're going to have to go back and take a look. Oh!
I want to go back and take a look at this. I think David Hera not realizing that Cameron Harris was making a move onto the inside. You see Cameron holding his racing line there. The number 15 car just coming down onto him. That number nine car looked like he, it sounded like he was getting ready to blow there, trying to make his way across the start finish line. Go back and take a look at this again. I, I don't think David Hera realized the run that Cameron Harris was getting. They make contact, and it's unfortunate for David Lurfano to get wrapped up in that as well. David Hara taking a big lick there. Unfortunate for them. An unfortunate finish for those guys. Again, top five paying out. Those guys out of the money here at the All-Star Race on the last lap. Going into the last turn, turn three and four. Louis Clark, though, your race winner. For what was a phenomenal race. A phenomenal finish. Have to catch my breath after that one. Let's pull in the top three drivers. Starting with that double zero car, Johnny May. Johnny, how you doing, brother? Oh, pretty good, Fatty, buddy. How you doing? Hey, man, I'm sure you are pretty good. Right there, taking home a podium, finishing in the money. Charlotte was a wicked race. All you guys coming down to the last turn. What did it look like from your perspective there, being able to make your way through that last wreck and being able to take home third? Yeah, I, um, you know, because I really, I kind of struggled all day, and I'm like, you know, I just want to come home with the top five, and I'm like, man, I'm not going to get it, and all of a sudden, I'm like, yes, so. Well, you stayed pretty consistent there throughout the night. I mean, you were always right there in that top five, top six, top seven, a really impressive run from that double zero car. Congratulations, you're going to be taking home some money, taking home some bragging rights, a solid P3 and finishing behind Louis Clark and Cameron Harris, certainly uh, not a bad deal for the night. Congratulations, Johnny. All right, brother. Thank you. Next up, we're going to be bringing in Cameron Harris, finishing P2. Cameron, you got a copy? Oh, looks like no race interview for him. She pulls himself out of the chat there. Those guys might be talking about that last uh, lap there. We'll just skip to the race winner, Louis Clark. Louis in the 73 car, Project Dynamic uh, driver. How you feeling, Louis? Yeah, man, I feel really good after that. I had uh, some good fun. Yeah, I bet you do there. In stage three, it looked like Cameron Harris was going to be the one to be able to find that speed, to be able to dethrone you here at Charlotte. He had a really good run up until he didn't. He hit the wall, came crashing down late into the stage three. Not too sure what's being talked about up there. We tried getting some word with him, but he was unavailable. He's still taking home P2 with a good run. Another driver you were sweating out a little bit was that 19 car of John Higgins Jr. We were talking about it up here in the booth about how you were trying to break that slipstream, trying to break that draft towards the end of the race, coming out of turn two, onto the backstretch, dipping all the way down to the blue line. Just talk to me a little bit how intense it was in that third stage holding on to that lead. Oh, yeah. No, nah, man, I was just mirror driving, as you said. Um, the 19 was good. The 27 um, 
we knew he had new tires on. We knew that. Uh, me and Patrick got a, a nice little gap to P3 at the time. We knew Harrison, uh, the 27, was making his way through the field again. Um, so we knew, yeah, he had new tires on it. So as soon as the, he overtook us, I said to Patrick, right, this is what we're going to do. We're going to just sit behind him. And uh, because we knew our tires weren't old, old. They, they're not brand new, but they weren't old that we could keep up with him. And I knew if I sort of overdrive it into like turn three, turn four, he will have to overdrive it. And I was hoping he might touch the wall. And it did happen. So I'm happy about that. That um, it just everything went to plan, man. I, I feel really bad on the 77. Me and him uh, work so well together um, all the time. Yeah, yeah, it seemed man. like it seemed like here at Charlotte, once you found a little bit of bad luck, it just stuck with you all night long. That same thing happened with the seventy seven of Patrick McQuaid was running really good there with you, uh, one and two. He got into his first incident, and it seemed like after that he just couldn't catch a break. Uh, but up there, all by yourself, being able to hold it down, uh, use, uh, using all the race experience that you have, whether it's road course or oval racing. Um, just, just knowing how to defensive drive there, a phenomenal show. A lot of you guys putting on a show. You had both David's breathing down your neck there towards the end. Unfortunately, David coming down onto Cameron Harris as he was trying to make a last ditch effort, uh, to try to get into the podium and, uh, taking out both, uh, Hillbilly Motorsport drivers, but, uh, hats off to those guys as well. They were giving you a little bit of a run there towards the end. Yeah, we, uh, we knew them Hillbilly cars were going to be quick it's just a fact on this uh we knew once then two teamed up they um both david's at the end i knew i was basically a sitting duck so as you saw i had to weave down and up the crack and then i saw cameron try and um go high on i can't remember who it was i think it was the eight so i was like right if i give cameron the slip that'll slow them down and then i can come back into the bottom corner to then give david the slips and then they can both gain but not gain as much as what they would have and they'll both be fighting still if you yeah, know what the, i mean yeah the rest of the field playing checkers you're up there in the lead playing chess a phenomenal run louis clark congratulations i'm sure you have some people you'd like to thank winning the first all-star race here at all american racing league yeah uh well mainly i just want to actually to be honest take a minute from this and just want to say um thank you for everyone's support over the last week especially in the league um the last week's not been great for me as you know what's happened uh we ended up going to the hospital uh everything's fine but yeah i just want to say thanks to everyone's support it's been you know i was like overwhelmed by the support that i've had the last week with what's gone on uh but yeah i want to thank AARL, obviously yourself aided, uh, Project Dynamic, Sonic Equipment, All Limits, um, NASCAR Fans UK, and um, Calvin then at Sim 3D. Uh, yeah, man. How hot is, uh, how, how bad of an idea would it be to bring in that 15 car here for a, a post race? Yeah, man, bring him in. <laughs> <laughs> if I get my head chewed off, it's your fault. <laughs> all right hey congratulations race leader here at the charlotte all-star race louis clark yeah no, yeah, yeah we tried we tried bringing in second place finisher cameron harris uh he refused the race interview i'm sure him and uh the, the other guys in the discord just talking about uh the end of that race there some good hard racing there on the lead lap in the, going into turn three unfortunately taking out both David Hera and David Lerfano in the process. Johnny May finishing P3. A lot of these guys having some really, really strong nights here tonight. It might not have been for points, but it can definitely build a lot of momentum as these guys are only about halfway through the regular season here. Adam Angerstein, another driver, really impressive tonight. He was caught in some early wrecks and, and uh, really found himself in a bad situation. He finishes in the top five in fourth. I can say the same about fifth place driver Joshua Hetrick. He was wrapped up in multiple incidences throughout the night. He was able to bounce back and finish P5. So he's in the money. Patrick McQuaid, sixth. We talked about 
about his bad luck throughout the night. Fred Hool finishing seventh. Unfortunately, both Davids eight and ninth, and what looked like was going to be a two, a second and third, or at least a third and fourth. Um, and Larry Garns, their teammate, finishing inside the top ten as well. Outside the top 10, Charlie Dickey in 11th, John Higgins Jr. 12th, Tyrone Yo Jr. He was having a good run there in the top five, uh, top 10, top 8 until he found himself with some bad luck. He's finishing 13th, and Chad Snyder, another bad week for him in that number 5 car. Going to be taking home 14th, multiple laps down, unlucky for him. But I'm sure he'll be able to get his stuff figured out Sooner rather than later. Race winner, Louis Clark. A phenomenal showing here at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Of course, we can't forget about the race sponsors. We brought them up all night long, starting with broadcast partner McConey Setup Shops. Use code Faded TV at checkout for 15% off all products, subscription, and coaching. Cutting Edge Forge out of Wingate, North Carolina. For sponsoring the All-Star Race and, of course, Top Sale Trucking. Sponsoring the entire series, Truckers Feed America Next Gen Cup Series. Here every Tuesday night. It's been a pleasure up here in the booth. I was one heck of a race to call. I'm Brandon Robinson for Faded TV. We'll catch you next time.